set the stage a little bit by taking us somewhere that is not a lab. And the place that we're going to go is, um, I don't know if you recognize this, it is, uh, this was actually from the movie, does anybody remember the name of the movie about McDonald's? The Founder, thank you. And so this is the 1950s, and I think there's a little bit of irony in this because this is not a lab as we know, however, many of the diseases that we treat are caused by the food that we eat here. So there's kind of a circular reasoning going on here, so it's excellent timing for us. One of the things that happened in this movie, and, and I don't know how many people saw it, but I would encourage you to see it, it's a great story, um, is it showed a little bit about how the McDonald brothers took their very first facility and laid it out for the kinds of things that resonate with us in the lab world. Optimization, workflow, productivity, asset management, and being agile. So they did it in a way that looked something like this, where uh, this was a top view, they drew chalk on the outside, I think it was a basketball court or a parking lot, laid out where they thought people needed to be, had people actually move around, do the fries, do the condiments, erased the chalk, made changes, and then finally came up with a system that worked, and then they stuck to it. And then they were able to use that system to create the food that they needed to create in the shortest amount of time. Obviously, the one thing that that didn't result in was agility. Now, when we think about our tasks, it turns out that we have very similar tasks. We have to optimize our workflow. We have to optimize the operation of the lab. We have to improve productivity over time. We have to figure out where our equipment is and uh, how to leverage it. And then we also have to be agile. So not much has changed, obviously, since the 1950s. And I'm sure nobody ever expected to come here today and be compared to McDonald. However, I think what's very interesting is the world has changed. And it's actually interesting to think about what is driving the need for us to completely transform the way we accomplish these tasks? So the way that we do this is we talk through uh, not just process changes, but digital tools to allow us to do this better in today's day and age. So we're going to go through, I'll give you some examples, and uh, my colleague David is going to give us a, a demonstration here of some ways that we can think about digital tools. And I very much appreciated Niv's approach to the starting of her uh, reconfiguration of this consolidation by thinking about the human experience. When we think about labs, we often, or we have in the past, been thinking about the facilities themselves, the equipment, the sample workflow, but what we haven't really thought about as much, and we need to, is the human experience. And this came to bear when um, I was helping lay out a lab for a, a, a healthcare system in France, and the lab optimized, optimization group got it completely organized, and everybody was thrilled, and then the lab manager came in and said, this is not gonna work for us. And everybody stopped and said, why is this not gonna work? And he said, well, we have two people in wheelchairs, and they won't fit in between these workbenches. And everybody sat back and said, hmm, there is an element of the way that we do our jobs that we haven't been considering. Now, it, it's true that the current labor situation globally is actually contributing to the way we think about the human experience and laying out labs and how we can optimize because without taking into account the human experience where people go, we're obviously going to miss out on that optimization process.